By virtue of the authority vested in me as regent of the Clara Barton chapter of the National Society Daughters of the American Revolution, I now declare this meeting in session. Please stand and remain standing, if you are able, through the opening ritual. To perpetuate the memory and the spirit of the men and women who achieved American independence, to, pro to promote the development of an enlightened public opinion, and to foster patriotic citizenship, these are the objects of our National Society, Daughters of the American Revolution. Guard that which is committed to your trust. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. You shall remember all the way which the Lord your God has led you. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for your abiding presence in the land of our country. We thank you for all those yesterdays of our human race whose lessons and fulfillments have become a heritage to us. Continue, we pray, your blessings upon this nation that all who are a part of it may learn true nobility of manhood and womanhood. Grant us growth in understanding and increasing devotion to righteousness. In your holy name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Barbara. And just a friendly reminder, um, if you can silence your cell phones, that would be great. Thank you so much. So we will now have Susie Seymour, who will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Please join me by placing your right hand over your heart. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Susie. Next, we have the American's Creek. Janan Schler will lead us in the American's Creek. You will find the card on the table. The American Creek. Read along with me. I believe in the United States of America as a government of the people, by the people, for the people, whose just powers are derived from the consent of the governed, a democracy in a republic, a sovereign nation of many sovereign states, a perfect union, one and inseparable, Established upon those principles of freedom, equality, justice, and humanity for which American patriots sacrifice their lives and fortunes. I therefore believe it is my duty to my country to love it, to support its constitution, to obey its laws, to respect its flag, and to defend it against all enemies. Thank you very much, Jan. The preamble to the United States Constitution will be led by Denise Simpson. There's also a card on your table. We, we the people of the United States in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. To ordain and establish this constitution for the United States of America. <laughs> Pat Grace, can you approach the front, please? She will lead us into the national anthem. Thank you. 
Registrar Kathy Tolly, Historian Jane Enschler, and Librarian Heidi Grayler. Thank you, everyone. And for those chapter members who are holding district appointments, please rise so that we may greet you and thank you for serving District 12. And this morning we have a very special guest here with us today. She's a longtime friend of mine for 48 years and has just retired from the Garden Grove School, school District. Uh, excuse me, school district. With 30 years of service as personnel director. Susie Seymour, can you stand please? And let's welcome her. So much for joining us. Please stand so that we can read you as well. Any prospective members who stand up? Yeah. 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 So thanks everyone. Um, we have a very wonderful program for you today. This program is very special to us. It's one of our favorites. As many of you know, for those who may not know, the National Society Daughters of the American Revolution was founded on October 11, 1890, and was incorporated in 1896 by an act of Congress, and our motto is God, Home, and Country. It is open to any woman, 18 years or older, regardless of race, religion, or ethnic background, who can prove lineal descent from a patriot of the American Revolution. The Clara Barton chapter, National Society Daughters of the American Revolution, was organized on January 13, 1974, by 12 enthusiastic women who wanted to bring DAR into the heart of Huntington Beach, California. There are three objections of object, object sorry. There are three objectives <laughs> of the National Society uh, that the National Society holds here, and they are historic preservation, patriotism, and education. Today we focus on education. Our chapter has been involved with our local schools for many years through the American History and the DAR Good Citizens Committees. So this morning we will be celebrating our American History Essay Contest winners grade five through eight, and we will be celebrating our DAR Good Citizens um, High School winners today as well. And now I'd like to invite our American History Chair, Roxy Ross, to come to the front to begin her portion of the program. Thank you. <clears throat> Can you all hear me? Yes. Okay, thanks for the microphone. Well, welcome, students, parents, family members, friends, teachers, essay judges, and members of the Clare Barton chapter. On this day, we celebrate outstanding students recognized by the Clare Barton chapter for their winning essays about American history. The American History Essay Contest is open to students in fifth 
through eighth grades, the topic in fall of 2021 was the tomb of the unknown soldier. Now, war is not an easy topic for anyone to write about. Students were challenged to imagine they lived between 1914 and 1921, over 100 years ago. World War I began on July 28, 1914. In their essay, their brother, like many brave Americans, wanted to help on the side of France during World War I. For it was the French who helped the American colonies during the Revolutionary War and enabled us to declare our independence from Britain. America did not join the war until 1916, and it ended on the 11th day of the 11th month of 1919. The phrase, the 11th hour, alludes to that time in history when civilization <clears throat> could have been stuffed out like a candle flame. World War I was known as the war to end all wars. Millions of soldiers were killed in battle. Millions of civilians died as a result of the destruction of cities and towns throughout Europe. And millions died from disease and famine that resulted from war. Americans who fought and died in France were buried in the American cemetery in France. In 1921, with great ceremony, four unknown Americans who died in France were brought home to be buried in the tomb of the unknown soldier in Arlington, Virginia. This national tomb honors all those who died committing brave and selfless acts of patriotic devotion and service. Since this monument was established, there have been other wars. Now it is possible to use DNA to identify soldiers who have died but are unrecognizable. But the unknown soldier best represents all those who were lost or are still missing, who will forever be loved and remembered by those of us who live because of their courage. As members of the Daughters of the American Revolution, we are descended from American patriots who served in the Revolutionary War. We honor the values of freedom and democracy our ancestors fought for. Today, some VA mothers wear a pin with red ribbons and a blue star to represent a son or a daughter serving in the military. Other DAR members wear a pin with red ribbons and a gold star. They are the mothers who honor the memory of a son or daughter who bravely served and gave the last full measure of courage and devotion for our country and its principles. These pins remind us that freedom is never free. Now for our essay winners, and forgive me. <laughs> I will call up each student winner and will ask them to introduce their family members and friends. And we will take a picture of them as they receive their award. Um, their award will include a certificate of, of the chapter award and a gift of cash and um, also uh, a bronze medal that they can really find. Our fifth grade winner is Kellen Riddle, a student at Liberty Christian School. Kellen, would you please come forward? And
and for you, we have this lovely certificate. Says Daughters of American Revolution, American History Essay Contest Chapter Winner, Helen Riddle, Claire Martin Chapter, Fifth Grade, Liberty Christian Schools, and today's day. And it's signed by our national president as well as our national chair of the American History Committee. So let's um, hold this up. Be proud of that. And then we're going to print them over here. So we can find some extra letters. Yeah. And then this is your medal, and this is some cash. So be very careful. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, we work, the DAR, work with local high school administrators in college career centers, nominating one senior student from each of the different high schools. Six high schools within Huntington Beach High School District participated, and we have five award winners uh, with us today. And I am so impressed with these kids. They are rising stars, high achievers, and awesome people. And their backgrounds and cultures are varied, as is our nation, and all sharing the qualities of a good citizen, of accountability, service, leadership, and patriotism. This award honors one outstanding young adult in their senior <coughs> class demonstrating these qualities. Once a student, I don't know, can you hear me? Once a student is chosen for the DAR Good Citizen Award, they're invited to participate in the optional national scholarship portion of the program. It's a great deal of work, right? <laughs> and it includes a personal statement, a two-hour proctored essay, and letters of recommendation. Five of the six schools, however, participated in this essay. The essay question was, how do the qualities of a good citizen, dependability, service, leadership, and patriotism help support this nation? And I'm just going to mention a few of their thoughts. Kate remarks that in spite of global pandemic and political polarization, that people, people with these ideals remain grounded. And that these notions don't just support our nation, it's the glue. T felt these qualities observed in community allow people to feel safe and be counted on, dependability creating trust. Discussing history of America's leaders like Abraham Lincoln, who give us examples of those qualities today. That the First Amendment gives us all the right to protest and bring change to improve all of our lives. Our world continually changes and America is the light working toward a more perfect union. Respecting, they talk about respecting, serving their country, the servicemen and women, first responders, healthcare workers, and leaders in these stressful times. Their essays speak to our founders, our leaders of change and in change, and why we need the glue that these values represent. Our service uplifts those who are unheard and ignored, assisting those who have gone without. These qualities nurture and rebuild from the ashes that the phoenix of change burst from, wow. doing so with pride and wow. dedication to the nation. That's the wow. wow. And uh, these innovative students, even during the pandemic, which we all have been there, uh, were still very busy. Paige founded and is president of a school organization for black students to help align cultural awareness with education and inclusivity and creating a $500 scholarship. Ashley planned and organized a major fundraiser barbecue benefiting special needs and physically handicapped students program, which my granddaughter is one of those students, and thank you. <laughs> Uh, she loves it, by the way. All this hard work of all of them, and now and during the pandemic, with excellent grades, and somehow they had time to volunteer and dedicate their, uh, their efforts in their beautiful lives. I also recognize the balance in their lives with academics, athletics like track, volleyball, tennis, swim, surf teams, and the creativity in writing, performing, and art. In all these areas, their counselors, the uh, people that wrote recommendations, had recognized them as dependable and leaders. They also talk about um, that they find cultural differences that also flourish positive diversity and recognize these same characters and values in their own lives. Volunteering both in their communities and families demonstrate the care for others. Some of these students work to help pay for rent. Most are all problem solvers, supporters of other students, and trusted friends. 
and perhaps their future interests in health equality, journalism, environment, multicultural, racial equality, education, and computer sciences. These inspiring students are making a difference in our community and will receive a certificate, lapel pin, and a modest cash reward. The uh, pin for this award is unique and it's filled with symbolism. Um, the small pin has a rim. It has 13 stars, which represent 13 colonies. It has a band of blue, which represents uh, the qualities of good character, and it is circled with a laurel wreath of honor behind it, the torch of understanding. The daughters of the American Revolution are involved in this community and many others, encouraging and supporting programs like this for recognition of character values that form this great nation. Now, I would like to take the opportunity to greet each recipient and they could, if they choose to, yes. share with us a couple of their activities that they've been involved with and perhaps tell us what their future plans might be and introduce their guests. Uh, Kate Meister, I don't think she was able to make it today. And Seth Christ of Edison High School uh, met with me at 9 o'clock because he had to be somewhere. And Ashley, Ashley Sincero Gonzalez, from Ocean View, and she's also our chapter essay winner. Hi, I'm Ashley, and it came with my sister Yvette right here in the front. A little bit about me is that I like to participate in a lot of sports in my schools, and I like to be in um, many clubs. I'm vice president of NHS which helps other students like get uh, more scholarships and financial help. And a little bit about my essay, it was about how my parents and I showed up patriotism. Uh, my parents came from Mexico and they studied for their USA citizenship, which took them like about five years to pass, well, to study and then pass. And so they worked really hard for that. And how I show mine is, um, I like volunteer and I I um, said in my essay that I'm like a leader because I participate in a lot of things and I help advocate for people who like can't speak up and things like that. So yeah, that's a little bit about me. Thank you.
my name is Tim Lin. Uh, I'm here with my sister.